Hey guys, this is Henry from Obedi again. Today we're going to keep working on our Pro Tools um, video tutorials or series of tutorials. And so today's topic is going to be the grid and how to configure the grid in Pro Tools, okay? So, um, so in the past we've talked about, you know, a little bit of the, the main counter and things like that. And, you know, you have the main counter in the middle. Uh, right in front of you as part of your edit window but then you know the main counter yes it can show bars beats and you know minutes and seconds time code and things like that but what if you want to change that grid so what you see here in the timeline what if you want to you know mm, I guess you could say make that resolution smaller or bigger like switching let's say from quarter notes to let's say 16 notes 30 second notes maybe full bars well that's something that you need to learn especially when you're editing like things like rhythmic stuff like drums or percussion you might want to see the grid in a smaller resolution like 16 or 30 second notes just like parts like fills and things like that you want to make sure they're tight so you might need to change that now if we, we just simply zoom in horizontally, right, we can see that we have our grid right now set to uh, eight notes, okay? Uh, we have eight uh, grid marks, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then the ninth, it's actually the first grid mark of the second measure. You can see it here. One, one. One 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 two one two four eighty one three one three four eighty one four one four four eighty and then so on and so forth and then we start bar two, so we're in eighth notes, right? You can also see it here. This is bar one beat one, bar one beat two, bar one beat three, bar one beat four. But then each beat has two spaces. Okay, that's why you have eight in total for a whole bar. So what what if you want to change that? How do you do it? Well. Right next to your counter here, here you have your grid. Um, it actually says grid, and you can see that eighth note there. Now, if you want to show the grid lines, right now it's shown, you can see it's green. If you click on it, grid lines are gone. It's off, like the grid is not, it's not being displayed. My recommendation, you should always have that on. Now, how do you change that resolution? You go here to this little arrow pointing down, and here you can change your resolution of the, the, the grid resolution. So you can do like one bar and boom, it's literally one bar each grid, right? Each grid mark is one bar. Um, you can do, you know, half notes. You got two marks per bar, two grid marks. Quarter notes, it's probably the simplest and most common, right? One, two, three, four, and then, you know, you have your second bar, right? Uh, eighth note is the one that we had. We had eight of those on each bar. But then if you want to do 16, there you go. 16th notes, 30 seconds, and even 64th notes. Now, you have another cool feature here. You can select that grid resolution and make it dotted or triplet. If you're doing like jazz and stuff like that, you might need this, like a triplet feel. So now... Uh, what you see is an eighth note triplet. So you got three eighth notes on each beat. So one, two, three, that's a triplet. One, two, three, that's another triplet. One, two, three, and then one, two, three, that's the fourth triplet. One, two, three, four triplets. And then the second measure starts. A little bit of music theory there. You can also do dotted. If you like the dotted feel, there you go. You can do dotted feel. Um, now, that's supposing that you want to work with bars and beats. Now, you can also change your grid to things like minutes and seconds. And when that's the case, you select minutes and seconds. Now, you're not going to see like half notes and eight notes and 60 notes. No, because now you're minutes and seconds. So, you're going to see like one second, 500 milliseconds. You can see down here, your 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 time uh, grid, um, 100 milliseconds. 10 milliseconds or 1 millisecond. Now, keep in mind, um, if you select your minutes and seconds grid, that doesn't necessarily line up with 
the actual music notation grid. Why? Because if you change the tempo, then you know it might take longer, or or it might take more time or less time to go through a whole bar if you change the tempo. So that's probably not a good reference if you're recording, um, you know, a musical performance. But you have it there in case you need it. You also have time code. Uh, and that's expressed in uh, seconds and frames. You got feed and frame samples and clip markers. Now, my recommendation, you keep it in bars and beats. That's more musical, especially if you're recording real instruments. Now, right below your grid, there's this little um, uh, feature here. It's called nudge, okay? Your nudge is... You know, it's a, it's another time subdivision. It could be bars and beats. It could be minutes and seconds. It could be time code. Um, and that's the value that you can nudge what you select, okay? And this is especially useful if you're editing or you're, like, time aligning things. Um, you can always nudge uh, a clip by simply clicking on it and then using the numeric keypad, the plus or the minus sign, that's going to nudge things to the right or to the left. So, for example, if I, if I have my nudge, let's make something obvious. Let's make it um, half note. If I have my nudge value set to half note and I click on this audio and then I nudge it using the, the plus sign, Every time I click on that plus sign, or I actually type that plus sign in my new banger keypad, I'm nudging it by this amount, which in this case is a half note. Okay, if I do minus, I'm moving back. So that's nudge. Um, I selected half note to make it obvious, but it could be like, you know, eighth note. It's a smaller nudging. Um, but there you have it. This is extremely useful. Okay, when you're editing, you want to make sure that your grid is set to the smallest note value that you're playing. So if you're playing drums, you're playing eighth notes, and then you have a 16 note fill, might be a good idea to have this set to 16 notes so that you can see if your fills, your drum fills, are lying on that beat. So that is how you configure your grid in Pro Tools. If you have any other questions, please call us from Obedient PC Audio Labs, and we're going to be happy to help you. We will see you guys soon. Bye-bye. Want to learn how to produce music using this or using that or using all of these? Have you been watching videos, reading manuals, blogs, and trying to figure out everything that it takes to be a music producer? Do you have a bunch of music gear that you purchased and you still haven't made any music? Well, then you need Obedia, the world's only one-on-one -on -one digital audio training and tech support service. Check out the link below for a special new subscriber offer.